And hello there! It's uh, been a couple months since the last time I've done one of these. Uh, I want to start by uh, saying thanks to all of you, all probably dozen of you who watched uh, my first and previous Let's Play of this, uh, Race in the Space 1.1, where I played as the US and eventually won the game. Uh, took a while, well past historical, but at least I won. And with the start, the start I had, uh, it's better than I was expecting. But now we're going to try a little different here. We're going to flip the script, as it were. Oh wait, never mind. Select the window first. There. We're going to flip the script a little bit. Historical model. One, one, three. Well, let's leave the asterisk alone. Why? Whereas we are going to be the Soviets. And uh, in the same spirit that uh, I made uh, one of my early favorite Let's Players uh, into the, the director of the, of the American Space Program in Kokoskia, for this take I will have as the director of the Soviet Space Program. Can I even fit into the space? Is there enough room? Uh, ah, barely enough room. Uh, doubly so because uh, he's actually played uh, Race to Space before. Uh, he has on his YouTube channel uh, a, a uh, him versus something awful forms uh, of uh, I think the CD version of Race to Space. Uh, so it's only fitting that. Uh, where I had Kikoskia on the US side, for this to take one playing as the Soviets, I just will have as uh, my director, Frank O'Matic. So, let's get going. Frank O'Matic, enter and continue. Do yeah, it's a slightly different music here for the chief designer of the USSR. Different newscaster, same music. Uh, Good evening. Comrade Franco Mac lead the Soviet Union to greatness in exploration and conquest of space. Svetlana Izvestia. Izvestia being the name of one of the main Soviet era and even in the present Russian time era uh, newspapers along with Pravda. Uh, Pravda is truth, Izvestia is news. Uh, which led to a common joke even among the Soviets. Uh, that there is no truth in news, and there is no news in truth. So, uh, those who have seen my other uh, Let's Play as the U.S., uh, my initial starring strategy is basically the same. The Soviets have the advantage that things tend to cost a little less, and the disadvantage is that things tend to be less reliable. So, with that, let's go immediately. We'll just go... Yeah, we're a little bit behind on the U.S. at the start, so we have to make we have to make every MB count in this game as the Soviets. Failure will probably cripple us at some point. So we'll start get our Sputnik, get our R7, which is basically a modified first-generation ICBM, which they modified to throw up the Sputnik as part of the. Uh, International Geophysical Year in 1957. Uh, you know, demonstration of Soviet uh, technology. Um, so R7 can have a higher payload. It has a payload of 800. This means that we can, uh, well, we still can't launch more than just the first one man capsule with uh, the Vostok with the R7. The difference with the Soviets is, is that instead of boost, uh, separating boosters, they actually have a booster stage, like an interstage, and it has a payload of 1,200, which means with an R7 and a booster, we can even lift the Soyuz by itself into orbit. This may this may help us, this may hurt us, but we have a long ways to go. So let's go to R&D, R7 for 10. 
and our Sputnik for five. This is about normal. Uh, we actually have five more MBs, I think, than the Americans do at this point, I think. Uh, no future mission because it's way too early for that. And turn. Good evening. Yes. So instead of Operation Paperclip for like the U.S. side, we have basically the KGB is snatching German scientists uh, to have them work for the Soviet space program. And the other events in the news are basically filler things about how the Soviets are afraid of the U.S. and you know, yeah, it's the first ICBM, of course. Yeah, the Soviets are more, you know, aggressive, anti-American and whatnot. Uh, the general layout is, just, you know, everything's the same, it's just laid out differently. You have your vehicle integration building, your satellite programs, space history, administration, the flagpole still ends the turn, viewing stand, mission control, your launch facilities, R&D, the moon, which is Luna, you know, Russians. St. Basil's Cathedral is your fluff, basically, you know, basically it's an ancient thing that was then, you know, converted as a museum for the, uh, to show off the uh, bourgeois czarist regime. KGB headquarters is your intelligence, the Kremlin wall is your cemetery, and the Kremlin itself is, you know, where the politicians go to kick your ass if you fuck up too much with our difficulties. So it's more difficulty one, that's not going to happen, but, you know, whatever. Um, so R&D, strong research, strong research, okay, so a man, five, this is good. So we'll go ahead and do, and then future buildings, pad A, portal satellite. And we'll go ahead. Good evening. And now the news. Hey, we're in the Khrushchev era now. Uh, ah, yes. The Relog Reusable Space Shuttle, and that's basically a picture of I. I think that's actually the uh, Lapote, the um, the uh, Mig uh, derived variant. You know, um, Space capsule. I'll show you that actually. Um, Vostok is your one man. Voskhod is basically only a very slightly modified uh, Vostok. Soyuz, Lapote, uh, your LK 700, which is your uh, four man direct descent, your LKM, and your LK modules, which are basically your Eagle and your Cricket. Rockets, you've got the boosters. R7, Proton, N1, and the UR700 for the direct descent. Uh, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do with some of the hardware? Um, mission control, R&D, rockets for 10. That might not work. Sputnik for 5. Uh, we'll go ahead and purchase another Sputnik and another rocket, and we'll go ahead and get that mission set up, just in case. We may need it. Uh, we can start our first cosmonaut group, seven people. Uh, I'm going to botch the pronunciation of a lot of these names, so bear with me. Uh, yeah. Nelyubov, Gagarin, Titov, Nikolaev, Popovich, Bikovsky, Komarov, Bonantarko, Filatiev, Rafikov, and Ankeyev. Uh, again, like I did with the American, we'll just take the top seven, which are basically the, uh, you know, realistic top people. Uh, the one advantage the Soviets get in the other game is that a lot of their group one and group two people are very good pilots. Uh, not so much in the later recruitment cycles. So, was I going to buy anything else? No, I've got 30 MBs for fall. Mission is set. So, um, I'm going to do like I did before. Try to keep them at like 10 minute chunks. And, uh, I'll see you in a moment, uh, for the, uh, Soviet's first launch into space. <laughs>